A good way to backup and secure the most important files on your user's computer is to create folders redirection. Basically, the most important folders could be redirected to a remote computer. In a business environment, this computer will most likely be a server. This server, in an ideal scenario, is being backed up daily. When you open File Explorer on a Windows computer, you'll see some of these folders that can be redirected. These include the Desktop and Documents folder, as well as the Downloads, Music, Pictures folders, and others. To see the current location of any of these folders, right-click one of them and click Properties. The current location of this folder is displayed here. Clicking the Location tab allows you to manually assign a new location for this folder. You can do this by entering the new network path here and clicking OK. This path could be a location on another disk or a UNC path to a remote server. As you can see, the option to choose an alternate location for a folder exists for other folders here. Later in this video, I will show you a list of all the folders that have this superpower. If you right-click on a file that is located on your desktop, you'll see the full path to its location, which appears in the General tab, here. To start the process, you'll first need to create a shared folder on your server. This folder will include all the user's folders, and inside each one, the redirected folders. On my server, I created a folder named Shares. This folder is meant to have all the shared folders in it. One of them will be assigned to the folder redirection, and I chose to name it Users. Once the folder has been created, it's now time to share it. Open Server Manager, click File and Storage Services, and click Shares to see a list of shared folders on this server. To create a new share, Right-click here and click New Share. Make sure this is selected and click Next. Click here to browse to the location of the folder you intend to share, then click Select Folder and click Next to proceed. This window shows the selected share properties and allows you to change the name of the share. The name of the shared folder doesn't have to be the same as the name of the actual local folder. Edit the name or leave it as is and click Next. This screen is important. I highly recommend checking this option. Eventually, at the end of the process, this share will have multiple folders, one folder per user. By clicking this option, users accessing this share will only see their own folder. The rest of the folders will be hidden, since the users do not have permissions to access them. Admins with higher access permissions will obviously see all the folders. So check it and click Next. This is one of the most important windows in this shared folder creation process. You need to set up permissions properly to avoid future issues. This is the list of permissions inherited from the parent folder. Click here to customize these permissions. The first thing you need to do is to disable the inheritance and start fresh. To do that, click here and choose to convert inherited permissions. This will mostly keep the same permissions, but will allow you to adjust them. Remove any groups which shouldn't have access to this share, and now it's time to add the users with access permissions to this folder. Note that these are folder permissions and not share permissions. It's extremely important to choose the correct scenario in regards to granting access to these folders. Since these folders are personal, there are two main scenarios here. Each one affects differently on the way these folders will be accessed. Scenario number one. Only the user of a specific folder has full control access to their personal folder. Administrators do not have access to any of these folders. Ownership of a specific folder could then be taken by an administrator if required. In this scenario, add the domain users group with full control. These permissions will be automatically adjusted once the group policy settings are implemented. Scenario number two. The user of a specific folder has full control access to their personal folder and administrators have full access to all the folders. Scenario number two is covered in this video. 
click add, find the admins group, assign full control and click OK. Now click add again, find the domain users group, change this to this folder only and click show advanced permissions. Check this and click OK. And now it's time to assign share access. These are the general groups which are allowed to access this share. You can limit this to specific Active Directory groups. In my example, I'm keeping it simple. The domain admins get full control and domain users get change. Remember, every user accessing this share will only have access to subfolders depending on the security permissions you previously set. You can remove the everyone group. It's not needed here. In this video, I'm using the domain admins and domain users as basic groups and granting them access. When you do this in your environment, make sure you select the groups that work best for you. You could potentially create a specific group that only members of that group will have access to have their folders redirected. On the other hand, you might have a specific group of administrators with a job of managing these folders. That group should then be added instead or in addition to the domain admins. Click OK to close this window and next to proceed. Now click Create and if everything looks good here, click Close. Now that the share has been created and properly configured, let's move to the next stage of creating the group policy for the folder redirection. Please subscribe. In Server Manager, click Tools and then Group Policy Management. Choose the policy that will include the folder redirection settings or create a new one. Right-click it and click Edit. There are two steps to this process. Both settings are based on the user configuration. In the first step, you will configure the redirection itself. Under User Configuration, Expand Policies and then Windows Settings and then click Folder Redirection. As promised earlier, here is a list of all the folders that can be redirected. In this video, I am configuring the redirection of the Desktop and Documents folders. Right-click the Desktop folder and click Properties. Click here and select Basic. Make sure this is selected and then type the shared folder name here. Here is an example of the path to the specific personal folder once it's created. Now click the Settings tab. This setting is extremely important and depends on the previous setting you made when you configured the shared folder security permissions. If the intention was for each user to have full control access to their personal folder and that means will not have access, then make sure this is checked. If you chose the second scenario in which the user has access to their personal folder and that means have access to all the folders, then make sure this is unchecked. Click OK and then Yes to proceed. Configure the same settings on any additional folder you intend to redirect. Note that all these folders will eventually be created under the folder with the username. In the second step, you need to configure offline files. This will cause the files to be cached on the user's computer when it doesn't have access to the shared folder. For example, if the user is working remotely, the user will still have access to the files on their desktop. And once the user reconnects to the network, the files will be synced to the shared folder. Expand Administrative Templates, then Network and click Offline Files. Double-click the Specify Administratively Assigned Offline Files option to edit it. Click Enable and then click Show. The values of each redirected folder need to be added here manually. Follow this pattern to configure the folders in the value name column, leaving the value column blank. The pattern should be the shared folder, followed by the username parameter, followed by the redirected folder and should look exactly like this. The username parameter will be replaced with the actual username when this policy is implemented. Click OK and OK again to proceed. These settings will be automatically implemented on the user's computer after a certain amount of time that depends on multiple Active Directory related factors. You can force this to happen immediately 
by opening a CMD window on the user's computer and type the command gpupdate forward slash force. After you see the successful message for both the user and computer, click Y to log off. The first logon after this setting is implemented might take time, depending on the size of the redirected folders. If everything was correctly implemented, when you open File Explorer, you will see these icons on the redirected folders. These icons indicate that the specific folders are being synced. To verify, right-click one of these folders and click Properties. The location of this folder is shown here. When you click the Location tab, the location is also shown here and the buttons to change this path are hidden. Clicking the Security tab will verify the chosen settings set during the share and policy creation. In my case, the user and the administrators have access to this folder. It's the same with any other redirected folder. You can also test this by creating a file on your desktop, right-clicking it, then clicking Properties and looking at its location folder. Some portions of this video are extremely important for a functioning shared folder and for properly configuring the folder redirection. Make sure you do it properly this time. And always remember to watch this video next.